Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan. If you don't know me, I joined the class a little bit later. Um, and this is my final project. I really wish I could be here in person. Uh, however, due to unforeseen events, I am not able to attend class. Um, so without further ado, let's begin. So my final project is on Rococo. And I thought that this is a really interesting movement, even if our instructor hates Rococo in general because it stands in every way possible against the ideals of the Enlightenment at the time. And it represents um, fundamentally the disconnect between the aristocracy and what's going on in the world. So the Enlightenment, as you know, was a period of radical change and divergence from tradition. So spanning from the early 17th century to the late 18th century, we saw monarchies fall, we saw wars being fought over religion, over territorial gain, over personal vendettas, and Basically, everything came into question, and the whole MO of the time was, can we prove this inductively or deductively? So this new period allowed for the representation of women and eventually led to the democratization of art due to the rapid re redistribution of wealth in France and primarily in the United States due to the American Revolution. In this time period, we also see England experiencing their Industrial Revolution, and these three countries uh kind of get this the us france and england they get this new appreciation of greek and roman architecture and mythology that's evident in rococo a little bit but it's more evident in neoclassicism um so here again we see rococo standing against uh the movements and the ideals of the time so rococo like i've mentioned before is just fundamentally out of touch with society so a painting like this uh, which depicts sort of like the modern equivalent of a uh, 1960s hippie tour around the U.S. with peace and free love and all that stuff. Because um, Cythera, or Cytheria, I don't know how you pronounce that, um, is the island where Aphrodite first emerges from after being born from sea foam. This is the island she goes to, so it's her island. And so in a way, this is like a pleasure cruise, and you see everyone all paired up, acting not appropriately for you know children or something um but it's just super out of touch with what with what's going on because we see that most of the wealth is owned by um about one percent of the population and that leads to issues um like you're not caring about love or anything like that you're caring about how you survive um interestingly enough there's a famine in france in 1788 due to a harsh winter which kind of puts in motion the French Revolution and which leads to the execution of Louis the 16th in 1793. And then we see the Habsburg dynasty and the Habsburgs, specifically Maria Theresia, was a huge patron of Rococo. We see that that the decline of the Holy Roman Empire in the late 17th century or late 18th century, excuse me, and its eventual dissolution in 1803. So Again, it's very out of touch, and maybe you could see it as a cry for help in a way. Um, and this is Die Gartenkirche in Vienna. It was built next to a hospital commissioned by Maria Theresia, and it's supposed to connect the monarchy to the public in a way. But in my opinion, it's too flashy, and it really represents and highlights those wealth inequalities that existed at the time. Although her art tastes are not the best, Maria Theresia was great when it came to creating reform throughout the Holy Roman Empire. She reformed the tax code, um, which in sort of the ancient way of eating the rich, forced the large landowners who previously didn't have to, to pay taxes. In addition, she limits forced labor um, after a series of incidents, writing that, quote, the peasantry must be able to sustain itself as well as pay taxes, unquote. So she's very progressive and you could say woke for the time period. So this is Claire the Rhinoceros by Pietro Longhi, circa 1751. Um, you might notice that there's some women and they're wearing masks. Um, and then we also see uh, the man holding the rhinoceros horn sort of on the left side. And then up top, there's a woman in blackface. It's a very confusing piece, um, but I don't think that animal cruelty is cool. And I guess it's supposed to be funny or maybe it's supposed to be more of a realistic depiction of what's going on, but it just raises red flags for me. 
Um, but the themes of Rococo art would include classical myths and play and love and youth and all this froofy kind of aloof stuff. But Rococo in itself and its meaning is mostly devoid. And often you'll see like they'll invent myths, classical myths, um, just for the sake of it. And it's just a representation of that devoid meaning in aristocracy as well. Because in this time period, we see some people like Catherine the Great and Empress Elizabeth who are educated in their femme, femme savants. But for the most part, we don't see any sort of um, education in the aristocracy, which does not behoove them, which is part of the reason why we see the decline of the French Empire and the Holy Roman Empire in the late 18th century and early 19th century. So to some art historians, um, Rococo represents the beginning of the democratization of art, or at least this time period, the late Baroque. Though only the wealthy elite aristocrats can afford to commission art, no longer is it just the monarchy and the church that have total control over said art. In this way, this gaudy and somewhat annoying art movement has some redeeming value. So thank you very much for listening to my presentation, and I hope that whatever you do in your future, you do it well.